First up, he is the staff writer for The New Yorker and playwright whose play entitled Camp David opens next month in San Diego. Lawrence Wright is over here. Great to see you again. How are you, sir? All right, we love to have you on this show, Lawrence, and you know why we have summoned you here today, because as I was saying, the president was just in Saudi Arabia, you're an expert on this, uh, and uh, the 28 pages, again, if people don't know what this is, the 9-11 Commission uh, put out a report, a lot of it was redacted, you know Washington, they love their black sharpies, they cross out stuff, but the last 28 pages, the entirety, nobody got to see. Some people have read it. Bob Graham, a former senator, he's one of the guys who's been big on this issue. He said, the Saudis know what they did, and we know what they did. What'd they do? <laughs> Those 28 pages are about the Saudi support network for the hijackers who came to America. The Saudi government. Well, it was... There are members, that, there are people implicated in those 28 pages that are in the Saudi government. Uh, one person would be Prince Bandar, who was the uh, ambassador to the U.S. at that time. And uh, his wife sent money to some of the facilitators that were helping. Uh, but it, there's also hijackers. an agent. I mean, I saw the 60 Minute. This is an open, yep. it's such an open secret. It was on 60 Minutes. Right. <laughs> Leslie Stahl could probably tell yeah. us about it. But uh, it said that, you know, the hijackers had no money. They didn't know where That's they right. were. They barely spoke English. And they somehow, just out of coincidence, ran into a Saudi agent here in Los Angeles. Right. Okay, well, come on. Isn't that the smoking gun? This happened in January of 2000, 20 months before 9-11. And yeah. there are two reasons why those pages haven't been released. One is it's going to embarrass the Saudis. The other is it's going to embarrass the American intelligence community. And you, you know, think? The CIA, <laughs> CIA found out about these hijackers being in, they well, came to L.A. and then they went to San Diego. They found out in March of 2000, they knew that al-Qaeda was here. And this is back when George Tenet said, we're at war with al-Qaeda and all this sort of thing. And the inspector general at the CIA said okay. 50 to 60 people in the CIA knew about it. Okay, but I get it, we're at war with al-Qaeda. We weren't yeah. supposed to be at war with the Saudi government. Right. That's our allies. I mean, I, this is what I don't get about frenemies. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, like when Saddam Hussein in, invaded Kuwait, the Saudis shit their robes because mm -hmm. they were next. Right. Who came to their aid? Uncle Sugar. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so, and yet they attack us? Yeah. I don't get that. Well, when you say ally, I, the word ally in the Middle East it probably should just be subtracted from the language. Uh, it, Obama in that Atlantic article used the term so-called allies, which I think is a better term because we don't share the principles or the interests or many of the objectives with Saudi Arabia or many of the countries in that region. So it's, it's just not correct to say that there are allies. We have associations with them. We have some common interests. But I think it's time... Well, that, that, that's honestly, a lot to overlook if they were responsible for 9-11. Exactly. Uh, it's, especially since if we know that it was the Saudis who attacked us, wow, that makes the Iraq war even worse. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, lots of people have always said, well, we attacked the wrong country, but now it's pretty pretty out there. We definitely attacked the wrong country. And there was a, an well, actual right well, country. Well, I'm not in favor of attacking Saudi Arabia. I, I, there's one lesson that I've learned from spending a lot of time in the Middle East is yeah. things can always get worse. Right. And, uh, I think that if you decided to remove the royal family, which I would love to, I have no, I hate royalty, the whole idea of it. But you know, look what has happened. Uh, to the Even Revolution. the Queen? It's her 90th birthday. I'm sorry, Queen. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, but, uh, it, you know, the idea of removing uh, the Saudi royal family is probably not a good one. No, I'm not saying we should... Well, yes, because you know what? It would be worse. Yes. We've learned that lesson in Egypt. We've learned that lesson in Iraq. We've learned that lesson in Syria. Well, learned, obviously, is not what we've done. Right. <laughs> Perfect. Exactly. Right. But, I mean, in, in general, I feel like Saudi Arabia is the extreme example of the problem many liberals have with Islam in, in general. Yeah. You know, it's a little complicated. Um, it's Muslims who are oppressing other Muslims. Right. 
I, I think they would like to think that it's governments who are oppressing the people. It's very often the governments who are standing in the way of worst oppression from the people. Uh, Pakistan, another frenemy. Uh -huh. You know, they, uh, Pakistan passed a no child marriage law. You can't marry children. Right. Did not go over well with the people. Yeah. The teabaggers found that to be a meddling government getting involved. <laughs> A meddling federal government stopping us from marrying children. So it's a, little, it's a little tough to decide whose side we're on, right? You know, Pakistan and Saudi Arabia, I think, are the two worst examples of countries that we call our allies. But especially with Saudi Arabia, you know, it is not a state sponsor of terrorism, but it is a state sponsor of religious fanaticism. In the last 50 years, they have transformed the world of Islam. It's not just in and Saudi Arabia. And you Arabia. really make a mark a difference between the two? Oh, yeah. I mean, I taught in Cairo. Fanaticism uh, is I, not the same as... As... What'd you say? <laughs> it was 420, fanatic. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, what did you say was different? I'm sorry. They have taken Islam and completely changed it. It, it was, you know, there were Wahhabis in, in sure. Saudi Arabia, uh, let's say when the oil boom began in the 50s. But they got all the money, they spread it all across the Islamic world, and they have transformed it so that Islam is not the same religion as it was in right. Indonesia. And that's not connected to terrorism? Yes, it is. Oh, good. It's the terror. Not good, bad. What am I saying? Not good, bad, terrible. They're not sponsoring terrorism, they're sponsoring the ideology that gives rise to it. Okay, okay. So that's pretty much the same thing. Yeah. yeah. They're not sending money maybe to right. uh, ISIS, but they are sending volunteers. Which is ISIS. crazy because it's, it's going to bite them in the ass. It is. Because who is on uh, ISIS's shit list right behind us? Right. Saudi behind Arabia. Exactly. It was on bin Laden's shit list. Yeah. Because he knows the royal family behind closed doors, drinks scotch and gets pussy. That's absolutely true. And it's, absolutely true, it's, this it's, guy said. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Saudi Arabia is a family-run enterprise. Yes. And, uh, well, you know, it's a theocracy. No. It's no? Not exact, Iran is a theocracy. Saudi Arabia is a family condominium. And, and they have an agreement with the clerics that allow them to stay in power. So it's a partnership. But, uh, but they allow the clerics to go crazy. And you can only r really worship one thing. <laughs> you see distinctions where I don't. <laughs> the, there's, in Saudi Arabia, you, you believe you know, this central Wahhabi idea. There are Shiites that are pretty much you know, oppressed in that country. But there's, you can only believe one thing. You can believe it more or less. Right. And if you believe it less, you're kind of subtracting yourself. If you're competing for power, you believe it more. And that's why the cable... And those don't seem like values America should stand by. And now that oil is not so much in the equation, do you think we will ever be able to slowly back away from this alliance? I think we are. You know, I think what... Right. I think what this these billion dollar weapons sales uh, it really is saying, do it yourself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish. Thank yeah. you, Lawrence. You're always very enlightening on this and every subject. Lawrence Wright. All right, let's meet our panel.